Well, welcome back everyone. I uh, wanted to go ahead and do a little uh, little video on how uh, how some of the electronics in the Black Series trailer works. Um, just do kind of an overview. Um, I have done absolutely no modifications to this trailer as far as the electronics. Um, and I'll go through here and explain some of the things, but basically to get started over here we have a main power switch this will turn the main power off to the main circuit board up there and then we have the three light switches um, your bedroom lights, which are behind us. And then our overhead lights there. And then these are our mood lights or the LED strips draw a lot of power. The LED strips draw a lot of power. And then our four switches up here at the top or external lights, if I remember, let me look here, this would be front, back, and then side over here, and side over there. So, that covers the light switches, move around here, and I know you can watch a bunch of other people's videos and see the same thing. Um, these are nice little dimmable lights. You can press and hold to get brighter. You can dim them by pressing and holding. And you can go back to your night light. Of course, they pivot. So, it covers your light switches. There is also a three way switch for this here. Turn this on and off. The bedroom lights, you can lay down, turn the lights off. Uh -oh. So I just worked my way from coming in. The power inverter switch is up here. Um, and if you're off grid, this the power inverter charges your batteries and converts power off the battery. So you can turn the inverter on at the top. This will give you your basics. Okay, so we've got 13 volts coming in. It's in a work mode of just inverter. There's no load output because there's nothing turned on. Um, and then your output voltage is 121. So it's running off priority off the batteries. That's the yellow light on in the middle. This does power your microwave. As well as up here powers your antenna and of course your TV right here your king antenna is up here I do have it set um, that I get pretty good signal here at my house but that'll give you a rundown there of that there is a couple these outlets are marked inverter and of course you have a power button right here maybe hard to see for your king antenna this outlet also runs off the inverter and then this outlet back here is marked inverter beside the bed now, that is the only outset outlet around the bed. There's no 12 volt or USBs. Um, so let me go ahead and show you the inverter. It's actually underneath the seat. So this is the, conver and the inverter. There's obviously some settings on the back here. This is an Ames. It's a 2001. charger inverter um, 
just a low frequency inverter. This is not like a pure sine wave inverter. Um, but anyway, long story short, you can change the battery settings here. These are some different things if you look it up. Like right now, it's just inverter mode on. If you open this up when you're plugged into short power, you'll have your float, charge, light, um, charging, over temperature, etc., etc. These are all different alarms. Um, but you can kind of see there is a lot of extra space under here. If you wanted to upgrade. Um, kind of gives you an idea. There's also some other wiring I'll show you for the door steps. It's accessible from in here, but I'll move on here. Um, so, back up into this area here with the inverter real quick. Do have your Kenwood radio. Um, I unfortunately did a terrible job filming. One of the first videos I tried to film was rewiring the radio um, just to try to get the indoor and the outdoor speakers to work correctly um, the front and the back they had it wired that you couldn't be front back or left or right it was it was crossed um, so I ended up rewiring it that basically I think uh, how did I do it it's just right and left and then front and back um, so I can just fade it left to right to get my and that still leaves a rear and a front channel um, sounds are different so but moving on Kenwood radio there is an app that controls this you can plug USB into it um, I did get a box of all the paperwork on this so just to give you an idea of some of the things that come with it um, like I said I got the actual radio box and all the paperwork beside the inverter outlet here we do have a 12 volt cigarette lighter and then we have two USBs here. These are like a marine grade. You can look them up on Amazon. They're like a marine grade type uh, external mount. So, okay, so back here in the corner, we got another light here. Same way as the other one. Um, Pretty basic and simple. Um, here's where I'll work my way around here. So under the other seat is the other set of batteries. As you can see here. Um, whoop. Hit the, hit the reset. I had this one screwed because I was moving some things around. Checking out some of the wiring. Anyway, um, these are four 100 amp hour gel batteries. They are gel based. Um, they're still a typical lead acid battery. They're just filled with gel instead of regular acid and water or distilled water. Um, you can only run these down to 50% capacity. So that gives you 200 amp hours of capacity. Um, now this trailer is designed, everything is set up to kind of work together. Um, 200 amp hours of battery power, it has a 2000 watt inverter that is correct sizing um, as far as power to amp hour ratio. So that gives you an idea. There is um, some circuit breakers here, 30 amp coming off the solar controller right here. And then uh, as well and this is where you can monitor your batteries this is a absolutely terrible um, terrible design so you may or may not be able to see this I'll try to get a steady here so right now 0.3 volt off the solar panel. No amp around. But 80% charge status on the batteries. 12.7 volt. There's nothing hooked to the output load on this solar charger. Um, 
these are a 30 amp 12 and 24 volt uh, solar charger A lot of people upgrade these immediately because you have no way to really maintain or check the status of the battery without picking up the cushion basically. So that being said, um, that gives you an idea. I do have a problem with these batteries um, and I've already filed a claim with Black Series to warranty them. Um, but more on that later. Um, I'm actually going to purchase another set here anyway. So, moving on. Um, gives you the basic rundown of that up here. Alright, so looking up here at our panel, we actually have our general water pump switches but first we'll talk about some of the these are all circuit breakers no fuses no push-in fuses these are all just regular circuit breakers um, these are all your tank gauges now these do work in different stages and hear me out here it took me a little bit to figure this out but Basically, those things only work in a couple stages. They work in stages. You see, the general tank's got 75 in it. It'll next step go to 51%, and then it'll go to 38, 25, or is it 24? It's like 23, 24. They'll flick between, and then of course they'll go to zero. So there's like what? There's about five or six stages they actually work in. They'll go to 100% um, if it's completely full. Um, so that kind of gives you an idea there. This is your volt gauge coming in and out and your current power being used. Um, and this is something else that if you are looking into one of these trailers, it's going to be something you may or may not understand. Um, this is your kilowatts per hour used. Um, this is your current watts and then your current amps being pulled so we're, if we're pulling 1.95 amps currently um, break that down into an hour so say if we pull 1.95 amps for an hour off two uh, basically we have a lot of power life left in that with 200 amp hours of good battery power if this system is maintained from Black Series, they have it designed, it will work, it functions. We used it all last year flawlessly um, with really no hitch whatsoever. Um, two, two days off grid, two, three days off grid with no issues at all. Um, so very happy with the workings of the trailer and how they have it designed. Um, the water heater control is right here uh, that gives you your electric and your gas hot water your drinking water systems which I've kind of covered in some other videos but of course there's your drinking and your general water um, so that kind of gives you a base rundown of the electronics and the lighting um, I'll step back here into the kitchen or bathroom sorry bathroom and it has two switches. Of course, lights in there, lights out there, and then lights in these fans. Both of these. Boom and boom. Um, now, If we are plugged into shore power, um, that basically gives you a rundown of what you can run off grid. And you have to maintain this, use it correctly to, for it to work and function every day in and out. Um, you got to maintain, you got to make sure you're not using too much power. You don't want to use um, 
the voltage gets down to 12.2 volt, 12, you see 12.4 to 12.2, you probably look down there at that meter, it's going to say that you're pretty much down to, you've depleted the usage of those four batteries. Um, and it will happen, you can run them down. So, that being said, um, it kind of gives you a base rundown. If we uh, if we're plugged into shore power, you'll have a tank heater pad here that you can turn on. The tank heater pad um, heats just the general tank, so that's just your general water. If you fill the general tank in the winter. Um, Next thing would be your gas thermostat for your f gas furnace heat, which your gas furnace the gas furnace is under the bed here. Put this up. This is your gas furnace. Uh, and of course your power coming in, gas line, and uh the furnace, of course, it vents on the outside of the trailer beside the water heater. Your inlet air here, and your vent going out, which I'll show you on the other side here. Get the shoes. Uh, this here is a terrible design. Along with that thermostat. is uh, poor placement, poor management of what they could have done with the thermostat placement and so on. The vent blows up or down. As you can see this vent up or down. So we'll work our way back here just kind of show you into the bathroom here. Plugged into shore power. You also have a bathroom. So, plugged into shore power, you'll have an outlet in the bathroom as well. Of course, all your lights work. Water pump. Um, go back and watch my city water video. Putting the city water hookup in, you like. Um, in the hole here we do have a washing machine. I will tell you that I'm, we have never used this yet. This is definitely something I'm not sure when we'll get to use, but maybe sometime. I've been told you need to be hooked up to water and sewer to make it worth it. And last but not least, I guess I will show you what some people really like and some people hate. Is the Dometic heat pump and fan AC unit. So this is your hot and cold temp setting. And then heat, cold, or fan. Um, it is weird, it does have some weird vents still. Took me a little bit to get it figured out. Where to get the air to blow to make it work right. But we pretty much have that set up. Um, well, thanks for watching. Hopefully that uh, gives you a rundown of some of the basics. Um, and, and most of this does apply to, I'm not going to show you the outside and the exterior like the panel box and stuff. That gives you a basic rundown of the electronics, lights, functions, um, and how to maintain it. Um, the batteries do take maintenance to keep up with them. I was asking another video of winterizing it so I kind of thought after a little bit of thought process and owning the trailer for what's coming up almost a year. Um, I do have a pretty good understanding of how it works. So um, thanks for watching. 
If you got any questions, let me know. Um, I can always come back to it in another video or comment below and I'll try to answer your questions as soon as possible. Thanks for watching. I stood up here and turned around and I thought, oh, one last thing. It does have two of the nice little reading lights back here by the bed too, um, which are very convenient. So, just so you know.